So what's the role of fact in the environmental crisis? That's a very interesting question to be made by us in the present moment. We are nowadays in a unique time of the human history where we are invited to think about basically uh, how we have been conducting ourselves in relation to the world, to the environment, to each one of us all during all these last centuries, even millennia. Now, so it's a very interesting opportunity for, if you will, introspection in, in the direction of awareness, commitment, responsibility. Now, especially again in this time of global warming, environmental apocalyptics, apocalypses and stuff like this that really appear in the horizon to make us aware of, I mean, sometimes we are, do not become aware of something till we have, we feel some sort of threatening being there. Mm? So that's a very interesting idea. So in this context, we may speak about three terms, which may be egocentrism, ecocentrism, and theocentrism. Mm? Of course, the first one is the root cause of all this mess we are finding in this world, to be egocentric. It's one of these three have their respective patron saints, if you will. Nowadays we have, for example, famous Greta Thunberg as a patron saint of ecocentrism idea. You know, we may speak about people with all respect, like Donald Trump or whoever, <laughs> as patron saints, so quote-unquote saints, of egocentrism. And we find people like Saint Francis or whoever of theocentrism in the context of connection with nature. So starting with the main problem, of that is egocentrism. Main problem in egocentrism is avidya. Actually, we could say that according to our philosophy, there are not many that many problems. Actually, there is. I mean, strictly speaking, environmental crisis is not a problem. Raping is not a problem. Theft is not a problem. All those are symptoms of the real problem. The only problem, which is avidya, according to our philosophy, avidya means lack of education. So, because of not being education educated, sorry. We are misled about our own sense of being and by extension about whatever is surrounding us. Mm -hmm. So the problem here is not, doesn't have to do with the, the world, mm -hmm. the, the climate has to do with us being in avidya, with humanity being in avidya. Humanity is the worst enemy of man, of woman, if you will. We are our worst enemy, in other words, if we are, of course, in avidya. So, <clears throat> On the other side, we find, of course, the, the, the invitation from spiritual traditions to not be in avidya, but sometimes they are misled as well, like Christianity, which is a theocentric, mystical tradition, ideally, but sometimes also in a misled way, presents a very anthropocentric perspective of reality. Everything going around the human being in the world, and the world being only for the service of humans, and from there we have found a very a big a cause for this present environmental crisis with exploitation and the whole big environmental crisis as a result of that mainly. You know? On the other side we find, besides or beyond egocentrism, we find this idea of ecocentrism, where we fully identify ourselves with nature and naturally some concern for nature will appear as a result of that. And that may be a form of pantheism, if you will, when we kind of see the nature of God itself and we ourselves as nature and fully mm, uh, like, yeah, identify with it and just naturally react as what's happening with her basically. So that's of course such, such some more, some higher conception than egocentrism where we are in the center, ecocentrism is nature is in the center, but we know that above mm, even nature we have atmocentric orientation, what to speak of theocentric orientation, that actually will represent the middle point where we will try to balance the, the exploitative, exploitative perspective, mm -hmm, like consuming from the world, or the other perspective where we fully identify with it and we basically lose sight of our identity. So the middle point that Gaudiya Vedanta proposed, which sometimes is called as panentheism, means I see the world as one energy of the divine and I take care of that in that context, in the context of worshipping my source and realizing my own potential as an Atma. So, in this context we have a lot to do as Bhaktas to help in this world, not only by having a healthy lifestyle as we have already, but practices such as mantra meditation and prayer. Now we find in so many traditions these people who is quote-unquote only praying for the rest of the world, for nature, for other persons, and they are creating an invisible impact in reality that is 
really uh, healthy and, and, and undesirable for many. So in our tradition, as Sula Sidra Maharaj will say, we have this conception of sonic ecology. Through the invocation of sacred sound, the ether becomes purified. And as Srila Siddharmas explains, all the, uh, he explained a very particular perspective. He said all the present environmental crisis comes from the ether being polluted. Polluted ether expresses itself in polluted air, eventually in polluted fire, in polluted water, in polluted earth. But everything starts in the most subtle uh, realm, ether, where sound is the main force. So we are trying to go to the root in that sense by embracing sound in the most sacred possible way and from that making our main uh, contribution to the present environmental crisis in the form of uh, sonic ecology and whatnot. So some words about this important issue that may require some development but at least something to start to think about. See you next fortnight. <laughs>